In exercise 8.1, we just want to name some alkenes. Now, an alkene is a hydrocarbon that has a double bond. That prefix alk just means hydrogen and carbon are in the molecule, so it's a hydrocarbon. And then the infix en, that means that you have a double bond. So these are hydrocarbons that have double bonds. They're alkenes. So we want to name a couple of these. And the naming system is really going to be the same as what we learned in chapter four in terms of having prefixes, infixes, and suffixes, having branches. And then we may see chiral centers like we saw in chapter five. The only new difference here is that we're going to have double bonds in the ring. Now, the double bond is the most important part of these hydrocarbons because that's where the chemistry is really going to happen. Electrons are the glue that hold atoms together. And where you have a pi bond, where you have that double bond, remember the first bond you ever form is a sigma bond, every bond after that is a pi bond. So where you have the, that second pi bond, you have a lot of glue. You can do a lot, you can stick a lot of things onto that part of the molecule. So it's a really crucial feature of the molecule, and it's going to define the family of the molecule. So we want to make sure that when we do that first step in naming, which is finding the parent chain, that we include that double bond in the parent chain. Now, that, that, all, that means that even if you have a carbon chain that's clearly the longest, if you have a shorter one, but the shorter one has the double bond in it, the, the double bond has to be included in the parent chain. So even though, for example, this is longer than, that's the longest carbon chain you can find, that's not the parent chain for this because if you have a double bond in the molecule, the parent chain has to include the double bond. So here the parent chain would be the longest carbon chain that has the double bond in it. So that's the one sort of caveat. Make sure that your parent chain has the double bond in it. Even if it's not the longest carbon chain, the parent chain is going to be the longest carbon chain that includes the double bond. Okay, so here, the longest carbon chain that I can find in this first one is going to include this. And so that, um, that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different carbons in it. And if you try finding other carbon chains that include the double bond, you'll see the longest one here has those seven carbons. So the prefix for seven carbons is hept. Um, we do have a double bond here. And so the infix is going to be en. And it's a hydrocarbon. In that circled area, we only have hydrogen and carbon, so the suffix is e. So heptene. Now that's not the only thing. We had to number this, and you want to number this to give the double bond the lowest number. Double bond is actually more important even than the carbon chains. The branches, I mean. So you get the lower number for the double bond if you number it from left to right. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the double bond is on two carbons, but you don't give the numbers for both of them to say where the double bond is. You only give the number for where the double bond starts. You put that number in front of the parent chain, always between numbers and letters goes a dash. So the name for this parent chain is 2-heptene. The reason why you can just give the first number, the implication is that you'll always go to the next one. So if the double bond starts at 2, where does it go? Well, obviously it would go to three. That's the that's what's implied. Okay, so we have two heptene. That's our parent chain. Now let's think about the branches. This first branch has only one carbon, so the prefix is meth. And it's a, a branch, so immediately after the prefix comes yl. That's connected to carbon number two of the parent chain. So we'll have two always between numbers and letters goes a dash. So this is 2-methyl. Our next chain is coming off of carbon number 3 of the parent chain. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. There's only one carbon in this branch, 
and the prefix for one carbon is meth. Because it's a branch, immediately after that prefix comes YL. We have a third carbon chain. We have a third branch coming off of carbon number five. And so we'll have five, always between numbers and letters, goes a dash. Now in this branch, there's only one carbon. The prefix for one carbon is meth. And because it's a branch, immediately after the meth comes a YL. So we have three different branches that are the same type of branch. They're all methyl branches. So we can smush them all together. We'll put the numbers together, 2, comma, 3, comma, 5. Notice numbers are separated from numbers with commas. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. We've combined methyl groups, so we need to remind everyone of that. And the one feature you don't ever want to forget, very common mistake, is to say how many branches you smushed together. We smushed one, two, three branches together, and so we use a prefix try here. So all three of those branches together would be named 2,3,5-trimethyl. So those are the names for the branches. We had 2-heptene as the name for the backbone. So to put the full name together, the backbone comes last, the branches come first, always between numbers and the letter goes a dash, and the name for the full molecule will be 2,3,5-trimethyl-2-heptene. Beautiful name. So if we're going to try to na uh, do name B, we're going to go through that same procedure. First step is to find the longest hydrocarbon chain that you can. That includes the double bond. That's going to be the parent chain. So for me, the longest carbon chain I can find that includes the double bond is this one right here. And so in that one, well, let's number this. We want to number it to give the double bond the lower number. And we get the double, give the double bond the lower number by numbering it left to right. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, we have 7 carbons. Prefix for 7 is hept. We do have a double bond, right? We've got this double bond right here. And so the infix is en. Remember, the, double, the infixes follow the vowels. So if you have all single bonds, the infix is an. If you have double, at least one double bond, the infix is en. And if you have at least one triple bond, the infix is yn. These originally fo just followed the vowels in English, a, e, i. i over time got changed to a y. So because we have a double bond, we get the second vowel, en. OK. And it's a hydrocarbon. Inside of that circled area, we only have hydrogen and carbon, so we'll put an e there on the end. So. So far we have heptene. Now that's not the full name for the backbone because we have to say where the double bond is attaching to the where the double bond is appearing on the on the backbone. Now the double bond is on two carbons in the backbone, but you don't give the numbers for both carbons. You only give the number for the carbon where the double bond starts. So here that's going to be two. Put that in front of the rest of the parent chain, always between numbers and letters goes a dash. And the implication is that the double bond will start at 2, but if it starts at 2, where does it go? It goes to 3. It goes to the next one. So that's clear enough implied, so you don't have to, it doesn't have to be explicit. So the name of that parent chain is 2-heptene. Okay, now that we've th thought about the parent chain, let's think about the branches. Our first branch is coming off of carbon number 2. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. The branch has only one carbon. The prefix for one carbon is meth. And because it's a branch, immediately after that comes YL. So that branch is going to be 2-methyl. Our next branch is coming off of carbon number 3 of the backbone. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. In this branch, we have two carbons. The prefix for two carbons is F. And because it's a branch, immediately after that prefix comes YL. Okay, so we have sort of three puzzle pieces. We have 2-heptene, that's the parent chain, and that always comes last. And then we have two branches. So what order do we put these branches in? You alphabetize them. 
E comes before M in the alphabet. And so the branch that has an E, that starts with E, comes before the branch that starts with an M in the name. So just make sure you put, make sure that you put um, dashes in between the numbers and letters. And the full name for this compound would be 3-ethyl-2-methyl-2-heptene. Okay, let's try C. So the first step, we want to find the parent chain. The parent chain is the longest carbon chain that you can find without going backwards or lifting up your pencil. Well, here, for me, the longest carbon chain I can find, it has to include the pi bond. So the longest one I can find here is this. It has the double bond in it. And we want to number this to give the double bond the lower number. So going from the top to the bottom, the double bond starts in carbon number one. That's as low as it gets. Okay, we have five carbons here. The prefix for five carbons is pent. We do have a double bond, and so the infix is en, and it's a hydrocarbon. Inside of that circled area, that orange circled area, you only have hydrogen and carbon, and so the suffix will be e. Now we also have to say where the double bond appears in that five carbon chain and we're going to do that just by giving the number for where the double bond starts. So it starts at carbon number one. So this is going to be one pentene. So that's the name for the backbone. Notice that always between numbers and letters goes a dash. So the backbone name is one pentene. Now let's think about the branches. In our first branch, our first branch is coming off of carbon number two. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. This branch only has one carbon in it. The prefix for one carbon is meth, and because it's a branch, immediately after the prefix comes YL. The, car the branch just below it is coming off of carbon number four. So we have four, always between numbers and letters, goes a dash. The branch itself has only one carbon in it. The prefix for one carbon is meth, and because it's a branch, immediately after that prefix comes YL. Our third branch is coming off of carbon number three. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. This branch has a branch. This is one of those weird branches. At the end of it, you have a sort of snake's tongue. So that's telling you that it's iso. And we have one, two, three carbons in that branch. So prop, and of course it's a branch, so yl. So the, name, the common name for that weird branch was isopropyl. It's an isopropyl branch. Okay, well, we have two branches that are the same type of branch. We can smush those together. We can put the numbers together separated by commas, so 2, comma, 4. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. The type of branch that we're smushing together? Methyl branches. Just never forget to put a prefix that tells people how many of those branches you're smushing together. So here, we're smushing two branches together and so we'll use the prefix di. So those two branches are 2,4-dimethyl. So we have sort of three puzzle pieces. We have the backbone, and we have the two branch names. The backbone always comes last, one pentene here. Next, we have the branches. Now you want to put the branches in alphabetical order, but you don't include the prefix. So we're comparing m, we don't include the prefix, with I. Now a note about those those common names, the branch common names, uh, two other ones that were similar to this were tert butyl and sec butyl. And so just a word about how to put these into names. If there is no hyphen, as in isopropyl, then you alphabetize based on the first letter. If there is a hyphen, as in tert-butyl and sec-butyl, then you alphabetize based on the letter after the hyphen. So that's just a note, a word to the wise. Watch out for that. Well, here we have isopropyl. There's no hyphen, so we're alphabetizing based on I. We're comparing I and M. Remember, you don't alphabetize based on the prefixes. So I and M. Well, I comes before M, so the 
the branch that starts with an I will come before the branch that starts with an M. So the full name for this, you just want to put always between numbers and letters, goes a dash. The full name for that beautiful molecule will be 3-isopropyl-2,4-dimethyl-1-pentene. All right, last one for this exercise. First step is to find the parent chain. The parent chain is the longest chain you can find without going backwards or lifting up your pencil. But um, if you have a pi bond, if you have a double bond, then the double bond has to be part of the parent chain. So it's the longest carbon chain you can find that includes that double bond. So here, the longest chain I can find is this one going from right to left. And we'll number it. We'll number it to give the double bond the lowest number. We get that if we go from right to left. So here, let's just name that backbone. We have seven carbons. The prefix for seven is heft. We do have a double bond right here. And so the infix is going to be en. And this is a hydrocarbon. We only have hydrogen and carbon in that orange circled area, so the suffix is e. So we're dealing with a heptene. And we want to say where the double bond starts. The double bond starts on carbon number one. So we'll include that one at the beginning, always between numbers and letters, goes a dash. So the backbone name is one heptene. Now, off of carbon number four, we have a branch. Always between numbers and letters goes a dash. The branch is weird. The branch is a branch that has branches. And you might recognize this carbon here, if you ignore the, the backbone, just looking at the branch, that carbon is bonded to one, two, three other carbons. That is, the carbon in that middle of that branch is tertiary, if you just are looking at the branch. And so that is a tert for tertiary, and then butyl, because one, two, three, there's four carbons there. So we have but for four carbons, yl for a branch. The common name for that branch was tert butyl. So we have a tert butyl branch on carbon number four. Well, those are our only two puzzle pieces. The backbone name has to come last. The, parent, the branch name comes before it, always between numbers and letters, goes a dash. So the full name for that compound will be four tert butyl, one heptene. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how to, if you're given the structure of an alkene, how to name it. Really, it's the same as our regular naming. You just need to make sure that the infix becomes en, that the alkene is part of the parent chain, and that you give a number for where the double bond starts. Otherwise, the naming rules are the same that we learned in chapter four.